Hellbound is the latest in a long list of so-called old-school shooters, claiming to take influence from games like Doom, Quake, Duke Nukem 3D, and so many others. And on the surface, it definitely takes influence from Doom. I mean, I can say that much about the visuals, which are pretty reminiscent of id Software's recent and amazing 2016 reboot. Other than that, how does it all stack up? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Let's just find out, shall we? Developed by Cybot Studios, a development team known really only for making a bunch of games that felt like a poor man's amnesia the dark descent, Hellbound is a game that tries to recapture the style and mechanics of 90s FPS games. Now the game's pretty early on in development, so there's not all that much I can talk about yet in terms of the story and all that, but they recently released a survival mode demo for people to rip and tear through, which feels like a cross between Devil Daggers and, as I mentioned before, the recent Doom reboot. Taking place in a large circular arena, you'll kill a bunch of enemies for a couple of minutes before the wave ends and then you take on an increasingly tough roster. The air itself is just a giant circle, but scattered around the environment are obstructions jutting out of the ground and a lava stream near the center that you're going to have to jump over. You start off with a pretty measly looking rifle type weapon before you then get a kind of baseball bat called the Head Crusher. Then a triple barreled shotgun, a chain gun called the Indolora, which is apparently Spanish for painless. Then eventually a rocket launcher and with each new wave you get these weapons one by one. Now there's nothing new about any of this, but it's a tried and tested formula for FPS weapons and all of the great shooters in the genre have followed this archetype in one way or another. I mean, Doom had the pistol, shotgun, chain gun and rocket launcher. Duke 3D had the pistol, shotgun, ripper cannon and the RPG. And Shadow Warrior had the riot gun, the Uzis and the rocket launcher. And I think anyone who played a fair amount of FPS games from around that same time period is going to know that the melee weapon is bound to 1, pistols bound to 2, shotgun to 3, chain gun to 4 and the explosive weapon to number 5. Across the board, I reckon the balancing for these weapons is pretty much spot on. The starting weapon is slow firing and doesn't do all that much damage, but it's good as an absolute last resort and it has infinite ammo. The head crush is slow and kind of dangerous to use, but that's offset by the fact that it does a lot of damage, often jibbing enemies quite easily. The shotgun and the chain gun are the real cornerstones of the shooting, and the chain gun in particular I think is definitely the most useful weapon, due to the high damage output and the firing rate. And the rocket launcher is as you'd expect, does a lot of splash damage and is also really good at crowd control. As long as you don't fire it too close to enemies, which is probably going to hurt you as much as it does them. And you'll be seeing a lot of these weapons too, as the enemies are able to wield them as well. Most enemies are just demonic grunts, in a sense content to simply walk right up to the player using their weapon of choice. Then firing with absolutely no restraint or even consideration for their buddies, often killing them in the process. I came to kind of instantly recognize enemies when I saw them and know what type of weapon they're using and after I'd played for a couple of hours I always ended up giving those rocket launcher enemies a pretty wide berth because I knew they had the capacity to just ruin my day pretty easily. The only other enemy type is a goat horn thing that looks a little bit like the clears from Sirius Sam and these things often hang back throwing fireballs from a distance, though it has about the same health points as the other enemy types and they're pretty easy to avoid anyway. Things start off pretty easy, in fact the first few waves are a bit of a cakewalk, but once the enemies with the rocket launchers start to come in, things start to get really serious, and the challenge really ramps up. If you stand still for too long during these moments, you're going to be killed in seconds. About the best I could do was to get up to the 10th wave, and then after that it just becomes a cluster of enemies to the point that it's just overwhelming. To be honest though, the real threat in this game isn't the enemies, it's all these explosive little papules, if you will, that are scattered all over the place. I mean, think the explosive barrels in Doom and you get the idea. It becomes a bit of a problem in later waves because they respawn pretty quickly and whilst you might not set them off yourself, it's easy for enemies to do it inadvertently, which can do massive damage. At times I felt like I was shooting these things more than the enemies and they're a pretty big environmental threat. Visually, like I said, Hellbound does feel a lot like Doom and the enemies all look like they hit the cutting room floor, but they're still animated pretty well and they show off a lot of detail when you check them out up close. What's most important is that the game seems to run pretty damn smooth. It's using the Unreal 4 engine because, of course it is, and it looks pretty damn good when it's all cranked up. And the frame rate barely dipped even when there was a bunch of things happening on the screen at once. Overall, considering how light on content this thing is, and considering it's pretty early in development, there's not really all that many things I could find fault with, but look, I'll try anyway, because that's the kind of asshole that I am. I guess one thing was that I found myself getting stuck a fair bit on random pieces of shit that were sticking out of the ground, like chunks of stone and bones, and it was pretty damn annoying to be circle strafing, then just be stopped dead in my tracks. In fact, it even cost me a death a couple of times, because it gave the enemies the opening they all needed to just pelt the crap out of me. I don't know why there's iron sights either, like it doesn't really make much sense for a game trying to come off as a 90s throwback, not to mention it severely inhibits your field of view, as you can't really see your surroundings all that well. 
It's not necessarily needed to use them in the first place as most weapons are accurate from a distance and I'd just rather the alternate fire button be used as an actual alternate fire. Same thing goes with the sprinting mechanic, you know where you hold down the shift button and your player lowers their weapon and moves faster and again it's just like, why? Just make the default movement speed a little bit quicker and get rid of this mechanic entirely. My last concern is that I hope there's going to be more on offer in the final game. I just really hope it's not just a wave-based shooter with no real purpose, other than people jerking off over how good their times and score are on a leaderboard against people you're going to never meet in real life. Look, I get that some people enjoy beating random people from the other side of the world, but some people don't really care all that much. I mean, a survival mode on the side would be fine, but as a main mode instead of a campaign, well, no thanks. If you're going to sell yourself as an old school shooter, I want to see complex levels with fixed enemy placements. I want to see keys, health and armor pickups, and secret areas. Wave-based shooting with a Doom aesthetic and a buffet of 90 shooter mechanics just doesn't cut the mustard. For Hellbound, it's still early days, and the core mechanics, namely the shooting and the movement controls, feel pretty good. It's projectile shooting over hit scanning, and I think that's what's most important at the end of the day. A release date is just set as an ambiguous 2018, but hopefully sooner rather than later I can get to play a more finished build and really see what it's all about. If you haven't already, be sure to follow the game on Steam and check out the devs on Twitter if it looks like it's your cup of tea.